As you know, I'm presenting a series of videos that explain how to use MuseScore, which is a musical scoring application, and how we can use it in particular for scoring uh, guitar parts and, of course, for creating tablature. I had an inquiry from one of my uh, YouTube viewers about how do I use MuseScore to create a playable strumming track, so a rhythm track that replicates the sound of guitar strumming, uh, this user wants to use that as a backing track to create melody or to write solos around. So that's what we're going to do today. Looking at how do we uh, score a playable strumming pattern, a playable guitar strumming pattern in MuseScore. I'm using MuseScore 4.5 something or other uh, right now. So I had a, I had a fellow from uh, YouTube ask me uh, how to do this. Here's the strumming pattern that he's looking for. A very, very basic thing, but what we're seeing is a uh, downstroke on the, uh, on the one beat, and that's a quarter note, as you can see, and then down uh, and up with eighth notes. This eighth note is tied to that, so that's a quarter note duration, and then an up eighth note, and then a down and an up eighth note, and that gives you four beats. Okay, so that's what we're going to use as our... Uh, as our framework or our blueprint for what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm opening up MuseScore. Here's MuseScore here. I'm going to create a new score. As I always say, I like to create uh, for my basic score. You can always add st staves and a whole bunch of stuff later on. To start with, we're going to create one, uh, uh, st one staff and we're going to create staff with guitar plus tablature like this. Uh, and the guitar is shown on the staff. I'm just going to work in the key of C for today to keep things simple. Okay, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm going to change my uh, zoom so it's a little bit nicer. And we're going to talk about this. So the first thing we have to do is we have to understand time signature. The, pa the pattern we looked at a moment ago, which is this, is a 4-4 four, four pattern. This is one quarter note two eighth notes, two eighth notes, two eighth notes. So that equals four quarter notes in duration. That's a four, four pattern, okay? So what that means is in MuseScore, we have to have four, four as our time signature, uh, and that will give us four beats inside of each measure. That's how much time we need to record our strumming pattern. When we're planning out a strumming pattern, the strumming pattern we're working on is a 4-4 strumming pattern and the smallest granularity in that pattern is an eighth note. This is extremely common. It's extremely common to work in 4-4 when we're playing guitar. It's extremely common to work with a granularity or, or a quantization of one eighth note as being our smallest note. And the slight exception to that is sometimes we do get into triplets, not in this example. So we have to understand those ideas. So let's talk about what does that mean. He's, he, our guy has uh, submitted a G chord. So we're going to put a G chord on here. So if I'm putting in a, a G chord and I'm strumming G for a full measure, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose eighth notes and I'm gonna, my input uh, mode is on. Okay, and again, keyboard N to turn in uh, input mode on or off. Okay, so I'm going to put in eighth notes. I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to put in uh, the note G. Now I have eight eighth notes and that's how many you can fit in a measure. Now for our purposes, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put in a tempo over here so it's a little slower and we can hear what we're doing. So I'm going to put in a tempo mark uh, and I'll just use the default of a quarter note equals 80. Now if I play that back I get this. Okay, that's uh, four eighth notes. Now what's going to happen here is I'm going to, and you can see I can work on the tab, so you don't really have to be, you don't have to be particularly fluent with working on the staff or with written music. You can do all of this in your familiar tab environment. Okay, so I've got these, uh, uh, these eighth notes here. Now what I want to do is I want to understand the, uh, how do I get a pattern into this. 
I'm going to turn this uh, second eighth note into a rest. Okay. I'm going to go here and I'm going to select this second eighth note and I'm just going to click on the rest. Now, in, in purest terms, uh, I could turn the first note into a quarter note and have a longer sustain, but I'm going to get a more identifiable rhythm um, if, I, uh, if, I, uh, if I create some articulated spaces. So the, the, the rest is going to help me. Then uh, my next uh, thing that's happening, so that's beat one and this is beat two and uh, this is two and and on beat three there's a tied note. Now again what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that tied note into a rest and uh, and now what I'm going to have and so this is now the fundamental rhythm that we looked at before basically and I'm gonna play that for you right now. Dum, dum, dum. Dump, 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 and that's a rhythm that sounds like a strumming rhythm that I want to play. Now it doesn't sound like a strumming pattern yet. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put triads on here. Now you don't have to include the whole chord uh, in terms of all the notes, but I'm going to put in some notes so that you have a chord sound. The important thing for you to remember is whatever notes you want to hear being played, you have to put them in now. Uh, if you articulate this as a strum uh, later uh, and then try and add notes, it seems to leave the extra notes outside of the arpeggiation of the, of the chord strum. So I know that sounds confusing. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to make these all be G. I'm going to play. And these are just a G triad. So it's going to be G, D, G. Okay, so now we have chords. Now I'm going to go back over here. Again, N turns off the input mode. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to listen to my strumming pattern. Okay, now it doesn't sound very strummy, but you can hear it's bum, 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 bum. Okay, that's what's happening. So this is actually a G chord here. And now what I do I've got it going here. I've got it at 80 beats a minute. I've got the spacing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a strum. And when you give it a strum, you can give it a direction as well. So I go over here to the arpeggios and glissandos uh, palette. So I'm just going to select, I want to apply this pattern to each. Um, and you don't have to select the whole chord. You just select a note of the chord. So in the diagram, uh, my viewer was looking for a down strum on the first chord. So I'm going to go over here to arpeggios and I'm going to go to this one over here, down arpeggio. And I'm, then I'm going to, the next one over here is going to be down as well. And then the one beside it is going to be up, which is over here. And then I'm going to go uh, up, down, up for the last three. So I'm going to go here, up, here, down, and here, up. Now you can hide these marks in, uh, from the score, and I'll show you that in a second. But while we're working on it, it's very handy for us to be able to see them. So now we have this pattern with the strums. The arpeggiation is the strums. So we're going down, down, up, up, down, up. And that's going to sound like this. Okay, now it's a little brushy. <laughs> it's a little bit arpeggiated. How do I change that? Well, I'll show you. It's a very, very simple adjustment. So that what we want to do is we're going to use our command and click, and we're going to select all the arpeggiations. Okay. So we have them all selected. And then we're going to go over here to the palette 
and we've got the arpeggios selected and we're going to go properties and now we're going to adjust the properties of all these arpeggios we have selected and if you go to play here's on the on the side here you can sort of see where it says visible where my mouse is beside that there's a, a mark and if i click that you can see it shades them out and they'll disappear off the off the music I don't care about that right now. Play means I want them to make a sound. Auto place means that it's placing them relative to the notes by itself. And I don't care about that. That's convenient for me. But when I click on playback, it opens up arpeggio spread delay. So this is how of the amount of time that's transpiring for an eighth note in this, uh, in this uh, song, um, how much of that time do I want the notes spread over? I have three notes in this chord. I'm just putting a little triad in. And so how much of that uh, total amount of available time do I want the notes spread out? So I might say, for example, to get a more strummy sound and a less arpeggiated sound, let's say I try a 0.5 duration. And now I'm going to go back here and, and a tab to get out of there. Now that's set at 0.5. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to play again. And that is your strummy sound. Now the instrument sound itself is not ideal. <laughs> However, you can also adjust the instrument sound and you so you can make that spread delay. You can make it longer or shorter. If you find a, a strum is more pleasing to you at say 0.3 then just type in 0.3 and play with it that sounds a little more strummy to me okay so that's how you use the arpeggio to give you a strum now how do i change the sound for playback click on mixer okay so here's the mixer and here's the mixer and if I go here at the top, it says sound. Now this first track is the guitar track. And I think that's this. I'm not sure what the guitar chords. I think the guitar chords is just picks up if you put notation in for chords at the top. But if you put chords at the top, I don't believe you can do this same uh, articulation of the strums, which is what my uh, viewer was looking for. So this is how we get articulation of each individual strum. If I go to channel one, which is my guitar, which is this ta uh, staff here, and this is just a linked staff underneath. If I go to sound, it says MS basic, Muse score basic, but I can go to uh, get more sound or Muse score sound fonts. Sorry, I go to underneath Muse score basic is sound fonts. I go to the sound fonts that are here. And then I go to the right, it's chosen something automatically, but I can choose from an available list of guitar fonts. So let's say I want a, a clean electric guitar. Now I have clean electric guitar happening on here and that's going to sound like this. Little jangy. Um, I can choose different ones. Guitar. I can choose, um, you know, uh, uh, steel string guitar. Steel string guitar, and then I'm going to play that back. Okay, and the other thing you can do, of course, is depending on what you want. Okay, so if I want a, tr a, a deeper sound, because I don't really care what the notes are here, those are just standard chords. I, if I want a deeper sound, I can transpose. I can go to Tools, Transpose. So I can go to transpose down and uh, go to perfect octave, which is the bottom one. Now all of that has all been transposed down an octave, and now it's going to play back with a nicer sound. Maybe. Okay, so that's the final touch. If you want a deeper sound, you can transpose your part down and play the triad. And this would be the triad of playing on the lower strings on the guitar. Okay, so that is, uh, that is a, a basic example 
of how you can set up a strumming pattern uh, that's going to have a strumming kind of sound. Uh, again, you can cho change the quality of the sound of your chords simply by adding more or fewer notes to the, uh, to the pattern. Um, and that's a, that is an, a technique that, of course, real guitar players use all the time. Now, uh, and, and that's what I, I call the doghouse roof, where your downstrokes are usually played on lower strings, your upstrokes are normally played on higher strings. Uh, the, there's a starting point for you to get started with setting up a strumming pattern on your, uh, on your staff so that you have something that will play back and that you can use as a backing track for composition or for jamming over or practicing or what have you. So I hope that was a helpful explanation of how we can create rhythm parts in MuseScore and be able to play them back and jam along with them or use them as a basis to compose melody with. Uh, come on back and visit me again very soon because I am working on more and more MuseScore videos explaining in particular how to use MuseScore with the guitar. I'll see you then.